Ode to Autumn, J. Keats. This is the personification of autumn and the loveliness of it, and certainly the observation that it should not feel inferior to spring. Ode to Autumn Season of mists and mellow fruitfulness, close bosom friend of the maturing sun, conspiring with him how to load and bless with fruit the vines that round the thatch eaves run, to bend with apples the mossed cottage trees and fill all fruit with ripeness to the core, to swell the gourd and plump the hazel shells with a sweet kernel, to set budding more and still more later flowers for the bees until they think warm days will never cease, for summer has o'erbrimmed their clammy cells. Who hath not seen thee oft amid thy store, sometimes whoever seeks abroad may find thee sitting careless on a granary floor, thy hair soft lifted by the winnowing wind, or on a half-reaped furrow sound asleep. Drowsed with the fume of poppies while thy hook spares the next swath and all its twined flowers. And sometimes, like a gleaner, thou dost keep steady thy maiden head across a brook, or by a cider press, with patient look, thou watchest the last oozings hours by hours. Where are the songs of spring? Hey, where are they? Think not of them, thou hast thy music too. Will barred clouds bloom the soft dying day and touch the stubble plains with rosy hue. Then in a wailful choir the small gnats mourn among the river sallows borne aloft, or sinking as the light wind lives or dies, and full grown lambs loud bleat from hilly born. Hedge crickets sing, and now with treble soft the red breast whistles from a garden croft and gathering swallows twitter in the skies.